Hello and welcome back to Nekopon Gaming! Today we're going to be talking about Uma Musume and the new training scenario Grand Live. I'm going to be showing you some tips and tricks and strategies that I use for this training scenario, so I do hope you find it helpful and interesting. Thank you so much for watching and let's get right into it! So first off, let's have the overview of this video. We're going to talk about how to train effectively in Grand Live. Grand Live's focus is to train while also getting performance tokens and learn lots of songs before your next live. And lastly, we don't have to focus on racing like we normally do in Make a New Track. Before we dive into the strategies and tips, don't forget to click like and subscribe below for more Uma Musume content in the future. You can also follow me on Twitch if you want to see me play the game live along with other games and art as well. We also have a Discord community full of English-speaking Uma Musume fans, so feel free to join if you just want to chat or get some help from a friendly, small community. The links will be down below. If you're having trouble learning the basic mechanics of Grand Live, I will recommend you to look at my last video where I explain what lessons, performance tokens, and songs are in general, and then come back to this one later where we talk about more advanced strategies. First things first, I want everyone to know that you really don't need SSR cards to make a UG. I'm going to be popping up the training video for this UG3 Urara on the left side over here so you can see exactly what I did in order to get her to UG3. Now let's dive right into this, talking about performance first. You're going to need this many performance tokens to get all the songs. So you can see here that the total is heavily weighted to dance over here as well as visual. And luckily for you, we also know which type of trainings also weigh towards these performance tokens. For instance, if you want to get dance tokens, you might want to look into getting some speed because it's 60% chance that you'll get dance tokens. Or if you want passion tokens, you might want to invest in stamina because there's 60% chance that when you're training stamina, you'll also get some passion performance tokens. Let's talk about deck building for a little bit. So let's say you're building a deck for Grand Live, and let's say, as typical as you would, you would start with some speed. So with speed card, you'll get both dance and visual, most likely when you train. It's also the same thing when you go with guts. They both have dance and visual. In training, it's usually better for you when you stack two to three of the same type of cards together so you can get the most out of those stats when your supports are stacked in the same turn. So we don't want to be mixing speed and guts here today. But next, we want to be able to perform and get the other tokens as well, so we're still missing passion, vocal, and mental. By bringing in some stamina cards, we'll also cover passion and vision, but then we'll be missing mental. Same thing if we take power here, we'll be missing passion. And of course, if we take int, we'll be missing vocal. Because of this conundrum, it is recommended to build a deck with either two or three speed or guts. And then we use Light Hollow to fill in the last gap and use the rest of the slots on Int, Power, or Stamina. Light Hollow is a great card for filling in the gaps because every time you train with her, she has a chance to give you 20 tokens in the performance category you have the least of. So over here on the right side, we have an example of a build that is 3 speed and 2 Int, and then you can borrow Light Hello if you want it to. Light Hello is a great card even if she's not limit broken or if you have a maximum rare version of this card. In terms of deck building, I do recommend doing a speed int build in the beginning, especially if you're learning Grand Live, because int will help you recover a little bit of energy every time you train with it. Therefore, you will get more turns um, and then you will get more tokens, performance tokens in return. Make sure you inherit stamina or power stats in this case from your parents so you'll still be able to do your races. It is definitely harder to make long distance racers in this mode. As an example here, this is my Kuren Chan. She is UG7 with a speed and int deck. Because she has a speed growth boon, she really only needed two speed cards to really shine instead of three. Both Karenchans, um, the wedding one and the regular one, is actually a great character for this build because both of them have the speed growth, as you can see here, 10% on both of them, which is great for speed and int builds in general. 
Because of that, she only needed two speed cards instead of three, so do keep these growth boons in mind when you choose a build for your character. Here's another example, and it is the Urara UG3 again. She is using three speed cards because she doesn't have a growth boon for speed. Here you can see she actually have growth boons for power and gets instead, so she did need those three speed cards to help with the little bit of a speed deficit. Finally, I just want to show you my Orguri as an example of a deck without Light Hello. It is definitely still doable without her, but I do think it can be a little bit more difficult to complete all the songs and get the Gold Scenario skill. Next, let's get right into training, and I have some tips for you here as well. So number one, the goal in Grand Live is to get as many performance tokens as you can to learn songs. And especially in your early year, you want to train when there are three or more supports on a single training, especially those unfinished bonds, especially when you have a light hello in there. And then when you start getting those friendship trainings, definitely do those as well because like I said before, friendship training will give you double performance tokens, which is amazing. And of course, if you do it with light hello, not only do you get a reduced energy cost, but you might also trigger her event where you'll get another 20 performance tokens, which is a lot. Lastly, you can get the charming buff early in the training if you can. This is definitely luck based, but it'd be really nice if you did so that you can get those friendship bonds early so the two ways you can get charming early. So the first way is that if you luckily run into Anshin Zawa, you can pick the fourth option, the blue one, where you can get charming if you're lucky, but that one has a pretty good success rate. So if you choose that one, you're very likely to regain 20 energy and also get charming. The other way is that you can borrow one of these cards and hopefully you can get the event for them. So we have Sweet Tosho, Nishino Flower. Um, we also have the Urara card here, but only for the wedding one and not her other cards. There's also a ton of characters that can randomly get an event that will allow them to get Charming as a buff. So, you know, I hope and pray that you guys will get it early so you can get those friendship training in as soon as possible. Lastly, we don't really have an optimized turn. Like there's no, you know, friendship bonuses. There's no light hello being seen. There's not even like two characters that you can hit support bond with. You know, it's okay to just go out, rest or race. Um, if you're bringing light hello with you, going out with her is a great choice because she gives you energy and also gives you motivation up. Now let's talk about how I choose the techniques throughout my run. So the first tip I have for you is to prioritize cheaper lessons so you can save your tokens for the songs. Remember there's like a set number of songs that you can have, but there are unlimited techniques. So you want to save up for the good stuff. So you can see here, not all techniques are costing the same. The top one here is 24 mental for 12 int. And then down here, you can see we have 15 cost in visual for a leader skill. So definitely try to take the ones that are cheaper um, whenever you can. Number two is to not take skills that you won't use. So when considering skills, make sure you have a clear idea of what strategy and terrain you want this build to specialize in at the end so you don't end up wasting tokens on skills that are not useful to your end build. Let's say I'm trying to make a turf racer and I'm gonna be going into a turf PvP slot. This dirt skill is not gonna be helping me with that, so I would definitely not spend token on this. Number three is that prices will increase every single year. Keep that in mind as you're trying to get as many tokens as possible. As here you can see 16 mental in year two and 24 mental in year three for int. Of course, you also get more stats, but it does cost more to, you know, cycle that list over and over again. So keep that in mind. It's going to be harder and harder to keep up with the techniques and songs if you're not keeping up with your friendship bonds and training and collecting performance tokens. For number four is don't rest, uh, but maybe in summer it's okay. So in general, I feel like resting takes the most tokens out of all the different techniques. And I think it's really not worth doing, especially if you are doing like an int build. You can optionally save to choose a rest for the summer if you know you won't have enough energy to make it through. Otherwise, I would save the tokens and spend it on something cheaper. Next, let's get into some songs. 
Number one is to remember that songs is not only a vehicle to get through the entire scenario, but there are actually long term permanent buffs that you're going to use for the entire training session. So you want to get them out as soon as possible. Don't save up like maybe I want to save up 100 tokens so that, you know, I can just blast through all of them for the second live. You definitely don't do that. Just get songs whenever you can, because every time you hit a live, those buffs are going to become active. My goal when I'm playing usually is to get at least four songs, four to five songs by the first live, and that will really help you propel forward deeper into the training scenario. Number three is to remember that some songs don't appear until you get into year two. So for example, the skill point song down here will not show up until year two. So don't try to cycle and wait for this song because it's not going to come in in the first year. And then lastly, let's talk about what are the best songs to get first. In song priorities, we're gonna try to figure out based on my experience with the mode so far, it might change in the future, but for now, I'll share with you how I've been playing the game. First up is skill points. If you've played Grand Live and compared it to make a new track, you already know skill points are pretty hard to come by in Grand Live because you don't really race nearly as much. That's why the two skill point bonus songs are extra important and to prioritize them as soon as possible so you can stack up skill points early and often. Since these songs won't show up until year two, I recommend saving up some passion and visual if you can after learning four to five songs in year one. So, you know, if Yume o Kakeru actually shows up in year two, you will be able to have some performance tokens ready right away so you can purchase the song. Obviously, friendship rate is really important, so I'm going to put that on number two so you can double your performance tokens and also maximize those gains. Next is specialty rate because you really want those friendship bonuses from number two to show up as often as possible again to maximize your gains. Number four for me is going to be bonus stats so you can squeeze out just a little bit more out of each of your training turns. Number five is going to be stats for me, just plain stats. Because stats don't scale, you can pretty much get them at any time you want at your leisure. So the final one for me is going to be event up because, you know, how often a chain event show up is not that important because we're not going to be relying on these events to make the most out of our training. It's definitely too much RNG to rely on and we rather build our stats through training instead. Next, let's talk about scenario skills. Grand Life's exclusive gold skill is called I Want to Win With You, which is this one right here. In the second half of the race, if you're not in the back of the pack, your speed and acceleration will increase and it scales with the number of fans. What it means by not the back of the pack is this right here, order rate less than or equal to 65. In Champions Meeting Talk, that means it is positions 1 through 6. So this is a skill that's very similar to the first star, but it doesn't have recovery and is not recommended for chasers and betweeners, okay? So don't get this if you're a chaser, um, definitely don't get it if you're a chaser, and probably don't get it if you're a betweener either, it's, it's pretty risky. And in order to get the scenario gold skill at level 1, you'll need to have learned 18 songs by early December. This one says 19 here because it also includes Girls Legend U, but make sure you get at least 18 because Girls Legend U does not count towards that 18. If you've learned all the songs by early December, you'll actually get the level 3 version of this skill instead. If you're having trouble with getting all 18 songs just for the level 1 skill, remember everything we've talked about in this video about getting cheaper techniques and also making a balanced deck for performance tokens. Additionally, in Grand Live, you can get another free skill by getting at least 16 songs by early November on the last year. If you brought the character or card related to each of these selections, you can get the gold version of the skill. If you didn't bring the character or card, you will get the regular version of the skill instead. So what are the skills? If you pick Smart Falcon, you'll be able to get at full speed, and if you brought her character or card with you, you'll be able to get full speed ahead, which is a dirt skill. If you're in the first half of the pack during the last spurt, your speed will increase. If you pick Bourbon, then you can get Focus or Concentration, which improves starts and decreases delay of late starts. Next is Silent Suzuka, which you can get Bright Future. If you brought her or her card, you can get Trailblazer. Trailblazer is a medium skill, 
if you're in the front during the middle leg, your stamina will recover. And then for Agnes Tachyon, you can get all that there is or prepare to die. Prepare to die is a medium skill. If you're in a good position during the last spurt, your speed will increase. And then the last option with no character on it is the only one that has just a gold skill. There's not a regular version of this um, in the selector. This one's called Magician of the Lane. Become a little better at positioning during the final leg of the race. Here are my recommendations on how to choose which skill to pick. If you have a dirt runner or leader, definitely take the top one from Smart Falcon. It's a little bit stronger than taking Tachyon's Prepare to Die for the upcoming Champions meeting because the duration on this is 3 seconds instead of 2.4 seconds. Next, you might want to take Concentration if you're a runner or a leader and you need an early race skill to proc groundwork. Then we have Suzuka's Trailblazer, which isn't going to be a popular pick, but since we're nearing the end of the training here, maybe you can still um, see you don't have enough stamina maybe for the next Champions meeting, which is about 900 by the way. Then you want to take this Trailblazer to make sure your racer can actually finish the race. Then we have Prepare to Die. This one is the Tachyon option, which is a great skill for leaders and maybe even betweeners, but less likely to proc for them. Lastly, if you don't fit any of these criteria, like let's say you're using a chaser or something like that, then Magician of the Lane is your best choice here. Alright, that is all. Thank you so much to everyone for watching my video. I hope some of the tips and strategies in here will be helpful to you and you'll be able to make your UG characters and more. Do remember to click like and subscribe down below and follow me on Twitch if you want to watch me play Uma Musume live. I also play other games and draw as well. We also have our Discord community again if you want to join an English Uma Musume community. We have a lot of people in there that just love to help and we're just a friendly little group there. Thank you so much for watching and I really can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Don't forget to check out some of these recommended videos if you want more tips on how to train and I'll see you all in the next one. Happy racing! Bye!